for members and non-members. So I, I definitely appreciate everyone, you know, making time uh, to, to stop by, if you will. Um, just a quick reminder, I think Marissa already hit the nail on the head, but please, please, please keep yourself muted or we will mute you. Um, so much appreciated if you guys could comply. Um, if you do have any questions, you know, please put them in the chat. Shahab and I will be um, keeping a close eye on the chat. Um, if you just have any questions, shoot them, shoot them over. And uh, we'll, yeah, we'll get this going. So again, thank you, uh, Dwayne, of course, for uh, taking time out of your day and uh, talking to our chapter. Okay. Um, we have a, few, a bit of housekeeping really quick, and then we will get to Dwayne. Um, this is the part of the show where we always give love for our sponsors. So virtual love, if you will. Um, for our annual sponsors, Sutton Walk, Instead of Zebra Agency, MobileSoft, Flemings Can't Do Without Them, Monarch Productions, Yoga Local, Sky High Marketing, Peter Rad, Ivory Star Productions, UNLV, Lee, Business School MBA program. Um, so a virtual uh, round of applause for them. Uh, without your guys' partnership, and even um, more importantly right now, without the partnership, the, the chapter could not function. So we, I really appreciate that. Um, we're just gonna say that they're uh, sponsoring again because UNLV Lead Business School, the MBA, pro the, uh, MBA program is, is, is terrific. So uh, we always appreciate them. Lisa, if you're out there, thank you as always. Um, Typically, this portion of our luncheon, we would go around with the mic and you would have a 30-second spot. So you don't have a 30-second spot, but if someone is hiring, please email shahabzagari at unlv.edu. Uh, we'll also be posting it. Um, when we do the recap, we'll also mention that as well in our email. Um, and the last quick thing, guys, that I wanted to mention, um, and it's always kind of a weird, kind of a weird thing, if you will, um, but... I just wanted to, to quickly comment on the status of our city. Um, I think it's I think it's super important, um, just as a community leader. So I wrote something with Bethany, who's our VP of communication. <laughs> I was like, I can't even do it myself, you know. Um, but I just want to give you guys the heads up that um, I wrote this really fast. Um, I have the profound privilege of not only being your president, but being born born and raised a uh, proud Las Vegas local and a downtown resident of five years. Uh, the fact the fact of the matter is, our city is suffering, and with me having this platform, I felt compelled to at least say something, um, or I would, I'd regret it. Um, the AMA chapter, the AMA Las Vegas chapter stands in solidarity, solidarity with our black brothers and sisters that we aim to create a safe community for all marketing and business professionals who share the common passion of marketing regardless of race. Um, I believe we do a damn good job, but we could always do better. Everyone can, right? Um, but I encourage you to support the movement and begin to continue to educate yourself and listen while simultaneously adapting the mindset and goal of condemning all acts of racism, discrimination, and senseless acts of violence. This is not a political statement. This is a request for human decency. Um, and I think we can all agree. <laughs> um, but as communities like AMA who need to step up and scream as loud as we can in order to bring justice and peace back to our beloved city, uh, I love our city more than anything, and we should all refuse to stand by and watch it suffer. Um, we, as AMA's chapter, will be donating to the ACLU organization next week. If you would like to contribute, please email me directly. Um, we'll also put that in the email. Um, but AMA chapter of Las Vegas will continue to be a crucial arc for marketing professionals to cultivate meaningful, real relationships while offering insightful programming. So that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> and I hope you guys uh, can appreciate that. Um, but we just wanted to say something. And with all of that being said, Dwayne, I know it's a tough uh, act to follow, my friend, but I think we're all here to get down to brass tacks and we, the floor is yours, my friend. Thank, so we definitely thank you appreciate so much. it. Thank you. Um, really looking forward to helping you guys get maybe get a little bit better grasp on what is going on with Yelp, how it works, history of it, behind it, and then answer maybe some of the tough questions and help you. Um, just to give you a little background on myself, uh, I started in marketing and sales in 1981. This is my 40th year, and I've been through everything from subliminals to uh, you name it, right? Uh, and now the COVID is the new thing. But uh, I just want to thank you all for taking the time and, and, for, and secondly, allow me to be a part of this and work during these hard times to get everybody up to speed and education things. Um, please ask questions. Uh, I know they're gonna be asked, there's going to be lots of questions coming. Hopefully, I'm going to address a lot of them up front. Um, but please feel free to ask questions. And like I said at the beginning, um, I, if I don't know the answer, I always say this. I, if I don't know the answer, I'll find the question for you. And we'll go backwards and see if we can figure it out together. So let's get started and talk a little bit about the agenda. Uh, the main goal for today is just to ensure that when everybody leaves the session, they're going to have a better overall understanding of what Yelp is. 
Uh, it's going to be from, for example, how consumers use Yelp, uh, how it generates quality leads, and then the benefits of doing what Kathy at Second and Watkins are doing uh, with Yelp as well. Uh, so let's kind of get started a little bit for you. So Yelp reaches millions of monthly unique visitors every month. And uh, I am having, I had a conversation with somebody last week and we were talking about, uh, they have a couple businesses in Vegas. Um, and one of them was a restaurant. And we were talking about, you know, how many searches were there actually for a restaurant in the last 30 days in Vegas on Yelp. And there were over 3 million searches in the last 30 days on Yelp for a restaurant. So people are still trying to figure out how to eat, what they're doing and stuff. And, that, and that's part of the disconnect with Yelp is people don't realize how powerful it actually is. And, and I hope to help you understand that. This is Jeremy Stoppelman, uh, and that's his buddy Darwin. Uh, Darwin passed away last year, sad note. But the good news is we started in 2004. And what most people don't know is Jeremy actually worked with Russell Simmons, and Jeremy wrote all the code at PayPal, which has never been hacked. We also have Yelp that has never been hacked. We actually have a hackathon where we bring people in. We let them sit in our business and literally ask them to try to hack into Yelp and see what's going on. Uh, we grew by doing different fundings and over the years. And by 2010, we were 30 million revenue. We're now a billion dollar run rate. And we're still on track this year to be over a billion dollar run rate. Uh, one of the fun facts is that I like to say is Darwin, the dog you're seeing, was actually a puppy when Yelp started. And his cage was next to the server in a little office in San Francisco. So if you're a Yelp user and you've ever seen darn the things broken or you see the, the link snapped, that's actually because Darwin as a puppy had crawled through the cage and chewed, chewed through the server cord and brought Yelp down as a puppy. <laughs> so it's a little different now. It's probably a little more secure, uh, but that's kind of a fun fact out there. I want to talk a little bit more about reach and how it extends beyond the Yelp site app. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen if you've done a Google search, a Yahoo search, a Bing search, any other platform search, you see a lot of Yelp. The reason being is in 2012, we actually partnered with Microsoft and Apple and they became content partners. So what that means to you as a marketing device or agency is that when that took place, that everything on that Yelp listing from the website to the content, to the pictures, to the phone number, all that stuff was used in all these different platforms as content. Uh, another one that we've partnered with as well is Alexa. So Alexa is the largest by far in volume search or voice activated search. And if it's a relevant search to Yelp, it actually pulls that data. Another thing is with in-dash autos, if you've gotten a new car in the last couple of years, you'll see, you know, you'll see Apple or you'll actually see the Yelp, the Yelp uh, button in the cars. Uh, that's all in-dash. 85% of all new cars have the ability now to use Yelp in the vehicle. And lastly, if you're not up to speed on smartphones in 2019, Yelp actually partnered and we're now integrated to every factory phone for the major carriers except the Google Pixel. So if you have an Android or Galaxy, which we, Yelp is primarily not in for a long time, since 2019, if it's a new phone, it's actually there. The interesting part is when I talk to different agencies and I talk to different partners and similar clients when I get on some uh, co-calls, the interesting part is that 90% of people don't realize half the time they've been using Yelp and didn't even know it. So one of the challenges I'll leave you today is if you're not a Yelp user or you don't know what it is or how it works, I'm gonna challenge you to put the Yelp app on your phone. It's free and try it. My wife and I, we have six kids. I'm about to go see my seventh grandchild in West Virginia in July. And my wife is a much better Yelper than I am. Um, <laughs> but from what we've done around the world and all the traveling, Yelp actually works. Love it in Vegas. I found some hidden gems and some things you might not even know they're there in your, your locals. So let's talk about a little bit of Yelp, who uses Yelp, the demographic around it. When I started, the age medium was the big disconnect right here. 55 plus was probably less than 5% of all Yelp users. It's now, if you notice, from 18 all the way up, it's pretty diverse and it's pretty equally spread apart. What hasn't changed since I've been here is the education. Most Yelpers are college educated, six-figure households. 
So we're going to get into reviews, and I know that's the bane of the existence of Yelp for a lot of people because they really don't understand it's actually the largest directory in the world and not a review site. But I'm going to, I'm going to address it all head on and love to hear questions and love to learn from you guys what, what the angst is, and then we talk about it. So review stats. Everybody thinks, you know, when I hear clients that have bad listings, I always hear the same complaint. Nobody uses Yelp except to write bad reviews. Well, that's really not true. If you look here, majority of Yelp reviews, half the Yelp reviews written are five stars. Only 17% of all Yelp reviews written are one stars. Now, when it comes to reviews, there's a couple things I like to talk about. First of all, Yelp is the only platform that is 100% transparent in showing reviews, whether they're recommended, as some people think they're filtered or not recommended, and then the other is removed, right? Where they actually remove from violating content guidelines. When I tell business owners and I tell my managing, uh, my managing agencies and stuff that I partner agencies I work with is, the most important thing is if enough people in that review chain are giving you bad reviews and saying the same thing over and over, you have a problem. NASA, we have a problem. It's like we, uh, when I grew up and somebody said, if enough people tell you have a tail, you probably have a tail. So it's very important to understand when responding to reviews and, and looking at these reviews, that it's not always negative, it's more of an opportunity for you to sit feel something that's broke. By responding to all reviews, whether positive or negative, it increases the value of the Yelp listing. Let me repeat that. By responding to both positive and negative reviews, that increases the organic value of that listing. Always take the high road. You know, uh, I, for example, if somebody was to go to, uh, sorry, Kathy, but if they went to Suck and Watkins on their Yelp listing, wrote, I tried working with Sutton Watkins and blah, 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 blah. You know, they might take the high road and say, okay, you know, don't get personal. Don't take it personally, but turn around and say, hey, sounds like we missed it. I want to, first of all, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to write the review. Love to understand what we missed and how we missed it. Could you please reach out to us and let's set up a call so I can better manage my, my personnel. Same thing for a positive review. And I think this is the disconnect I tell a lot of people. When you get a positive review, Respond, say, hey, thanks so much for taking the time to write the review. Really appreciate it. And if you know anybody else looking for our services or our business, please refer them to us. Ask for the referral. I've been in sales for 40 years. I always ask for the referral. Do you know anybody else this would be a good fit for? And then lastly, take the high road. Always take the high road. Remember, end of the day, they might be an emotional, an emotional context on this response. And the good news is when you take the high road, whether it's positive or negative, you always get a better organic touch, but you always get a better Yelp listing from the review perspective. And one last thing to uh, the most important thing is if you get a critical review, understand this. Please respond or tell your clients to respond within 24 hours. 33% of those reviews are going to stay as is. They're never going to move. 34% of them upgrade the review and 30 and the, the other balance, the other 33% take them down. I'll repeat that. 33% of the people leave the review in place. 34% of the review people upgrade it and 33% of the people take them down. So you've got a two thirds chance to take a one star review and either remove it or elevate it. One of the myths, and I remember when I started with all the lawsuits, I used to never get calls from attorneys other than that they were suing Yelp on behalf of their client because we were hiding their good reviews um, because, and they were advertising. I, I, I can't make this any clearer than this. Just because you're buying Yelp ads, it doesn't get a business a better rating. And whether you choose to buy ads or not, it doesn't hurt the business from a review perspective. It's like church and state. There is no connection between them. In fact, in my eight plus years here, I have never spoken to anybody on our review team. Their emails, everything, nothing is in our platform to be able to find who they are or where they work. Um, I always tell people, I think they're in a closet somewhere with a grow light and they come out once in a while for air and food. Um, that's literally all I know about. But understand that advertising does not equal. Now organically, can it happen? Probably. You're, you have a better chance because you're getting your ads and stuff in front of more Yelpers and more Yelper users. So there is an opportunity, but it doesn't mean it's gonna happen. It's an if. 
So let's talk about the consumer journey, how people use Yelp. Um, if you're a Yelp user, this is probably going to be very redundant to you. If you're not a Yelp user, it's going to be give you kind of an, an idea of the pattern. So as many business owners to test, they appreciate the value of marketing channel. It's helpful to understand how the consumer path to purchase. In other words, how they actually get to your Yelp page. Well, it's real simple. It starts with a need, right? When they get that need, they've already done the research. Yelp is a phone book. It's like we did 10 years ago. If I needed a plumber, I either knew somebody that knew I had a plumber, word of mouth. I just happened to be watching TV, listening to the radio, a Valpac flyer hit. I had a magnet on the refrigerator for a consumer show. Something had to happen exactly when I was looking for that person. Or end of the day, we opened up the drawer and pulled out the book. Um, as we all now now, our iPhones are thicker or our smart devices are thicker than any phone book we get. Um, I remember using mine to set my grandkids and my kids up on the table to use as booster seats. Now they're not there. So when they get to Yelp, there's a need, right? So when you got home, there was something broken, you needed it. So now they're ready to spend. So what they're doing on Yelp is they're doing a search, trying to decide what business they're going to go to. So they're looking for maybe, are they open 24 hours? Are they available today? Do they do free estimates? You know, the different criteria that each of us use as an individual to search for what we're looking for. So now what they're going to do, all our searches are unbranded. In fact, this is an interesting part for most people. 85% of all our searches are actually unbranded. They don't search for a specific name. They search for a specific product. So for example, uh, what I mean by that is my wife and I were at the Vatican a couple years back and we got done doing the Vatican for the whole day. And that evening we walked out, I said, what do you want for dinner? And my wife, Linda said, I would love to have lasagna. So we yelped it because Yelp's in Rome. So we pulled up and we found this little Jewish community about a mile from the Vatican in the catacombs that today to this date has the best lasagna we've ever had. And by the way, I've been on every continent except Antarctica and Australia. So we travel a lot. So a general search looks, looks like this. People go, if you notice at the top, what they did is they type in plumber. Then they have a full list of profiles that show up, right? In this moment, you're unsure still who you're going to work with, but now you're trying to see, okay, what they're looking for. Again, 85% of these searches that just showed you unbranded. So now what we do is we look at the different businesses and stuff that came available to us in that search, and we start to identify options. And the way we identify them is, for example, um, I might do it solely based on pictures. Um, I'm a visual person. Uh, somebody here today, whereas they might zero in and on the reviews, the person sitting next to you might looking for the most convenient choice. So again, it gives you all the identification and all the conversion tools. And remember too, at the beginning when I talked about how Yelp transcends our content on these listings, transcends all the content, that's vitally important because if it's wrong on Yelp, it's gonna be wrong everywhere else. Pictures, right? Reviews, proximity, things that people look at. So now, when it comes to it, they're route ready to purchase. So I've done a need, I'm ready to spend money, I've decided I have a need, I'm gonna spend money, I'm trying to figure out who's gonna get my business, I do a search, I look at the different options, and then I click to tr pull the trigger. 97% of Yelp users make a purchase after, on a nearby business after searching on Yelp. That's not our stats. That's actually a third party stats from SurveyMonkey. So when people are on your, your client's Yelp listings or on your Yelp listing, they're literally trying to decide who they're gonna, they're gonna engage. And it's really important if your Yelp listing is not fully up to speed, that they won't. So for example, let's just take a quick poll. Think about this to yourself. Have you ever made a purchase after visiting Yelp? Doesn't matter if it was booking a hair appointment, which uh, some of us and all of us probably would love to get back, <laughs> or eating at your favorite restaurant, you know, whatever that looks like. Just think about that for a second. The common response uh, via chat is yes. Great, thanks Jeremy. No worries. Yeah, that's a great poll. I mean, and, and end of the day, half the time, if you're talking to a smartphone that you've had since 2019 and you're asking questions like restaurants or, 
or uh, HVAC or plumbing or electrical or storage units, whatever that looks like, you're actually getting Yelp data at that time and probably don't even realize it. There was uh, a quick comment was from Brandy is it's been one of the best resources to find store hours during COVID, which I completely agree. It has saved my butt multiple times. <laughs> yeah. And, and to that point, that's why I've been working. Um, I said this kind of at the beginning. I, I have been working more in the last 90 days since COVID and they closed their office here in Scottsdale and, uh, and sent me home. Uh, I put in more hours and more time um, because we are, we're working with businesses, whether they're advertising or not, we're working with everybody trying to make sure that the data and everything's up to speed. You've probably seen COVID banners on our pages, um, hours of operation. We worked with GoFundMe for a while. So people that were going out of business or about to lose their business could put a GoFundMe page. We've literally stepped up across the board to be there for small business. Um, and, and that's really the bread and butter of Yelp. And end of the day, when I say this, the reason it's so expensive, Jeremy, to your point with numbers and stuff, because when people get to Yelp, they're at the bottom of the funnel. They've already made a decision. Now they're just trying to figure out where. Hopefully that's been helpful for you guys. And, and, and always, I'll give you some contact information. Uh, I work directly with Ka Kathy and, and Sherry Sutkin Watkins. Uh, they're my partner, one of my certified partners. I do have the number one partner in the world that keeps me extremely busy. Um, and all my other partners are great partners and great people. And it absolutely has been one of the best jobs I've had in my entire career. So let's talk a bit, a little bit how I can help you grow on Yelp. So here's gonna, I'm gonna give you guys, um, and if you want to take screenshots of this next slide, I would really recommend it. If you'd like me to, to get the deck um, over to, um, like Jeremy, I can get you the deck and you're really free to share this. I can okay. get it to you as well. Yeah, that, this, actually that'd be great. Uh, okay. It'd be a little bit uh, quicker, I think, for you. Yeah, no worries. So this is, this, is, this is the money shot. Whether you advertise or not, please do all this. First and foremost, claim your listing. It's free. And you see right here, you see what it says right here? Once you claim your listing, it'll actually tell people you claimed it. The reason that's important is thinking about this. If you claimed your listing, you've got your content up to date, you're responding to reviews, your hours of operation, everything is correct. How much more credibility does it say that this owner actually cares about their business? Because end of the day, customer service is outweighing almost everything I do in any industry. You know, make sure you talk about your business history. There's a place in there to talk about how you got started, how long you've been doing it, and put your picture in there. Um, through BNI meetings, through AMA meetings, everything, people can start leveraging each other's pages. There's actually a way to share another vertical on your page if you choose to. Specialties. Specialties, it seems to be, when I look at most Yelp listings that most people work on, the, the mistake is, what they do is they use specialties as fluff. I want you to think of that as keywords. The first 200 characters in specialty are keywords. They operate like Google. Even though we work on category-based, not keyword search, within that category is an umbrella of different different pieces. So for example, this one says barbecue. So under barbecue would be like ribs, brisket, you know, pork, pulled pork, you know, all those different pieces. Under Asian fusion would be some type of salad infused with, you know, Asian devices and food and all that good stuff, right? So understand it when we talk about a category, the category is the top, but there are so many things under it. And now we offer actually offer negative keywords. Um, and I'll tell a story why that's so important with specialties. In categories. I had a guy, my first two territories when I started in April 2012 were Redondo Beach, California and McLean, Virginia. You couldn't talk about two different DMAs if you wanted to. Uh, but in Redondo Beach, um, it came down to there was a guy who was a chimney sweep and we didn't have a category for it, but he knew Yelp was, he was getting traffic from Yelp. So we started advertising and, and the only thing we could put him on was contractors at the time. So he was getting all these different leads and stuff. When we went down to the specialty area, we took the first 200 characters and it said chimney sweep repeatedly. That's all it said. Um, and we started to feel out that he was getting different traction, right? In other words, instead of getting, hey, can you fix a door? Can you screw in a light bulb? Can you put on a back porch? And he's responding, no, I'm a chimney sweep. I don't do any of that. Thank you. <laughs> um, he actually, we actually now have that category. So if you think you have a vertical and you think it's something that, that needs to be in a category in Yelp, 
please send it over to me. I have no problem bubbling up to our products team. Um, I'm actually on a call with our products team every two weeks. Um, so I'd love to, anything I can get to try to get Yelp to be a better platform for your potential clients or consumers, I would love to be involved in that. Get, get all the photos and captions up there. Now, one of the questions I have about photos is how do I control the photos? We're gonna talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Do a check-in offer. I think every business wants to know, how do I get more reviews, right? How do I get more reviews? Why can't I solicit reviews? Why can't I send an email blast? Why can't I, can't I, can't I? You don't have to. If you have a brick and mortar business, so any of you guys that have restaurants or, or any of your agencies or in any HVAC places or showrooms for like carpet stores, et cetera, get a check-in offer. Because if you're a Yelper and all you guys that are Yelpers on this call, next time, if you haven't done it, let you go to a business, check in. It's going to immediately, if it recognizes you as a, a valid Yelper and doesn't think you're spam or new or doesn't recognize your content, it literally is going to ask you right after you check in, would you like to write a review for this business? Um, I check in all the time. I cannot write reviews, but I probably have over 40 places in the last two months that I've been to that are asking me to write reviews and I can't. And then lastly, again, please respond to all reviews. Think about it. If you did a search and you saw a business and it was four star rated and the top two were two five stars and a one star, they responded to the five star, but they didn't respond to the one star. That personally tells me that they don't care much, care as much about what the one star person thinks. They only care about the five star. Treat everybody equally. Don't discriminate whether it's one or five. Treat them all the same. Hey, thanks so much. Taking you to do it, et cetera, et cetera. And just remember, people love Yelp or they hate Yelp, but it is part of your business. If they want to do some advertising or marketing, um, the difference is, and I, we do CPC now. Um, actually, we used to do CPM or just impressions when I first started. I was actually on a pilot to bring CPC to Yelp. That is a contingent. We have budgets from $100 up to $50,000 or more. Um, but the enhanced profile is the real key because the, the enhanced profile, first and more, foremost, is going to show people why they should choose your client's business, right? You want to paint a visual picture. To do that, we, can prevent, we have a photo slideshow. You actually have control of the photo slideshow in this instance. So for example, I tell a story with Dwyer Group, I had a plumber. And this plumber's picture was what you think it is. His shirt, shirt was too short, his pants were too low, and he was bent over a sink. Literally, the customer took the picture. He loved it because he knew when people mentioned that picture that they were literally talking about his Yelp page. And I kind of got with him and said, hey, you know, end of the day, that's not truly professional. Can you please reach out to that person? And oh, by the way, you can reach out to these people. If they have a Yelp account and they write a review, you can click on their name, find them, and you can email and work with them back and forth. If you have questions, ever reach out. But anyway, we reached out to the plumber. He reached out to the, the person that took the picture. Um, and asked them to take it down because it wasn't professional. And they had a little back and forth email spatty showed me it was hysterical and she took the picture down. Then he got control of the photo slideshow. We did it. So that's the way it works. So for example, think about this. When I'm looking at Hollywood brunch, this looks really good. But end of the day, the first picture should be the logo or the brand. The second picture should be the front door. If it's a brick and mortar business I'm walking through, if it's a service industry business like HVAC, or something of that nature. It should be like the trucks. You know, think visually who's coming to your house or what am I looking for? Uh, video hosting, the, 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 the level that, that Sutton and Watkins is as a, as a certified partner, the channel partnership thing, that and the enterprise level are the only two levels we now host videos. So if you're interested in talking more about that, I can help you with that. Then we take competitors' ads off. Uh, you can put call rail, call wagon. You can do any type of host of call tracking line you want on it. And also we do UTM codes. Um, I talked to a lot of agencies that aren't familiar with UTM codes, but they're familiar with pixels. So a pixel basically takes you from Yelp. And if they click on the website link, that pixel track that they left Yelp and they ended up on your website. You see that in the Google analytics, right? A UTM code, that's A to B. A UTM code says, hey, they left Yelp. They went to your website they looked at these pages and they clicked on this to call you or they clicked on this to request a quote. It goes from A to Z. Uh, I'd love to tell you guys more about that, but please do some research. UTM codes are free to create. And if you're using a Google admin or account of any sort, 
you can actually track and monetize it that way. So some Yelp ad facts, again, just to reiterate, we are category based. Ad placement, um, you've probably seen it, it's either above the search, below the search, it's fixed in the photo streams, it's search and request to quotes, request consultations, it's all over the place. Campaign planning, um, you'll know if you talk to Kathy and Sherry, when they reach out to me and as a partner at Yelp, the first thing we do is they say, hey, I've got a business, let's talk about these guys, what do you think we can do for them? I'll pull a competitive analysis. I'll talk about how many searches there were. I'll talk about how many searches there are available. And then we'll talk about a relevant budget that makes sense to make them relevant in Yelp. We don't have to, we don't have to take over the market, but we don't want to be below the market. So my strategy is always to help you plan that out. Geotargeting, talking about what, where's their DMA? Are they trying to go five miles, 10 miles, 15 miles? One thing and to that point is this is not a global reach. The maximum reach for Yelp, and it's only in home services, is only is going to be a hundred mile service area. Most ads radiuses are going to run 15 to 30 miles and we can restrict that. Ad copy, you get to choose whether you want to pull it from a profile that you have or you want to pull it from a review or just want to pull it from business information. You literally can control the ad copy. These are all changes that I've seen since I've been here. And again, the tracking component, UTM, driven leads, organics, all those things. Uh, great stuff to have. The user actions, if you're not a Yelp user, what happens is that the people come over here and they do a search, they locate a business and they click on it. When they click on it, it brings this up. This is an advertiser and you can see they have a check-in offer. So if they check in, they're gonna ask them to write a review. You can schedule service. So when they do this, this page, the different options that there are are actions that we consider a lead are great. So let me back up for one second and talk about, it. you do a search, this is not a click or anything. This is just a search. You, you showed up in X amount of searches a month. When they click on the page, they literally hit that button and go here. That's when it becomes the first click. Then we do a secondary click before it becomes a lead. So just because they got to here doesn't mean it was actually a lead. It was just a click. They have to literally get into a secondary action derived from the Yelp listing. So the Yelp Partner Program, I'm just gonna briefly highlight this. If you want more information, please shoot me an email, I'll get that to you. But the, resor the resources you get are amazing. Um, you get time range reports. Instead of just a thousand foot view, I can drill it down to how many clicks were organic, ad driven, was it mobile, blah, blah. I mean, literally it's 42 lines of data that I can get compressed into one box or I can give you all 42 lines. Results, you can get the leads the clients want. The conversion on this is higher than anything I've been around. I've never seen conversion like I see on Yelp, nothing. Um, I've been Google Ads certified now for over seven years. I have never, not once on Google people I've talked to seen anything close to this. And then lastly, revenue. Because you're, clear, you're getting more of the leads, you're having more reserves, it allows you to quantify with your clients and explain to them how it's actually working for them. So, in, and to recap, we basically will provide all the resources, we'll deliver the results, and we'll get you more customers. So a recap on the whole BS overall, the Yelp's history started 2004 for a billion dollar run rate. Um, we have seen a decline of about 25 to 30% a lot of our verticals. Uh, restaurant verticals are actually up. Home service verticals are actually up. Uh, the searches haven't dropped off at all. Uh, consumer journey. Right? Understand the consumer journey. When they do it, they use it like they do any other platform. They have a need. They do a search. You know, I might go to Google or I might go to another platform and, and do some research. But when I'm about ready to click that and give them my credit card or spend money, I want a secondary source. And a lot of people, millions and millions of people every month use Yelp. And lastly, the pro tips. Get out there. Claim your page. Look through all the pieces and work through it. End up, I know, Jeremy, you probably have some questions. So let's go from there. Oh, I got some questions. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. First, well, it's from Stephanie. Should companies with several locations each claim their own Yelp? Yes, they can. Or the better workaround for that, and that's a great question. So, for example, as long as you have 10 companies or more 
um, we can get you what's called a parented account and we can give you access to up to 10. Once it goes to 10 or more, then it starts to become paid and you would have to have users for each location. Okay, hopefully that answered. Um, and obviously if you guys have a question or Dwight will um, we'll post his contact information and I'm sure he'll answer you when he can. Um, there was one, um, how does Yelp help customers monetize traffic and or leads? Tell me, tell me more what you're looking for. I, I mean, how do we help monetize? We quantify and track everything. Yeah. So, it's a little vague. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a little vague, but it's okay. So end of the day, for example, um, Kathy, I'm going to use you. Uh, Kathy has a specific, Sherry and Kathy have a specific client that we pull a time range report and we talk about how many organic leads they have versus ad driven leads. We talk about what those leads look like. Were they website directions? Were they calls? Were they organically driven? We can, we can see all that. Uh, okay. The one disconnect that Yelp does not do well is calls because the only call that we track is if you're on a mobile device and you hit call when it brings up and you hit the button and says, are you sure you want to call and you click that? That's the only call we track. Okay. Interesting. Um, this one's from Ben. It's a little long, um, but there's a persistent perception that advertising gives people an edge on getting bad reviews removed. This is compounded by the way the system displays or suppresses competitors on their profile page. On Google or Facebook, the ad system is distinct from the content of the platform. What is Yelp doing to, to help promote, excuse me, what is Yelp doing to help people understand how the ads work versus how the platform works for business owners? That is a long question, but it's a great question. <laughs> um, you know, when I first started here a while back, man, I kind of remember, I'm like, well, why in the hell they put competitors ads on the page? Right. Um, and end of the day, when a Yelper is looking for a resource on Yelp and they've made a decision that they're going to interact with some type of business, um, we want to make sure that we give them all the opportunities that are out there, not just the one or not just the two. So for example, in Facebook, and when I see the ads in the feed, you know, if I click on that ad or see that ad, um, you know, that's a specific different pattern where Yelp is a little bit different. You have to understand there's immediate purchase intent on Yelp. Facebook is phishing. Google is phishing. Google is SEO. Um, and when they do an SEO, they kind of drive it to, I'm going to put a keyword out there and let's see how many fish we can catch. Facebook is just like it was back in the day. They're trying to catch people, you know, say, Hey, yeah, no, we thought about doing that. Let's click on and see what it is. And I can tell you, my wife will use Facebook. Um, we were a little town, Winsworth Towns, West Virginia, and she saw some ridiculous milkshake and she says, we have to go there and try it. So we did. Um, and then we yelped them and she checked in on Yelp. So I don't know. Um, but end of the day, uh, we're not, we, we differentiate ourselves a lot. And, and I'll say this, do you remember when Google used to put all the ads down the right and on the bottom of the page? Yeah. There's a reason yet they've moved them to the middle of the feed like Yelp did. We stole, we've stolen a lot of stuff from Google. In my, in my opinion, we've taken a lot of things from Google, the things that work really well and we think we like and put implemented it into Yelp, but we've implemented them in the back end as a resource for the advertiser to be able to control the ad, ad, ad separation. Google, on the other hand, is still SEO, SEM, but now the ads are in a box halfway down, right, or at the top. Um, so to your question, Ben, what we're really trying to do with Yelp is to separate ourselves from the other platforms, but yet use the same mechanisms they use to trigger great leads. Hey, actually, Dwayne, if you want, um, if you can actually stop sharing your screen and then you can pull up the, the chat window. Sure. Maybe that'd be a little bit more effective. That's okay. Yeah. Um, but the next one I was going to ask you when you get it done, because I was like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to just uh, keep slamming you with questions. You can read it. <laughs> Cause there's some, there's some good ones actually that, and you know, just a quick story. Like I worked for a hotel and I responded to so many Yelp reviews and I had three, you know, two restaurants inside my hotel. And like, mm -hmm. it was every single day I was responding. Um, I know it can become uh, tiresome at times. Right. Yeah, let me see if I can get into questions. Mute, stop video, participants, new share, pause share. There should just, oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, and then the bottom, uh, there's Got a little chat bubble. Yeah. And uh, the next one Let's I was going to ask you is Mr. Peter Rad. If you're yeah. kind of in the middle. 
which is can you share a story about the about a business that did well with Yelp that no one would think would do well on the platform, basically? Um, yeah, I, I, I thought Yelp was just for food. That's literally what, what I thought when I first started here. I mean, it's restaurants. That's how I used it. And end of the day, what I've seen over a long period of time is the people use it for restaurants that it works and they go, well, that's pretty cool. Then they're going to try it for a hair salon or they're going to try it for something different. Um, one of my favorite stories is um, my largest agency, we brought on an HVAC client in rural Georgia. And they at one time had four pages, four Yelp listings. And one of the problems is, is Kigo was coming in and actually building listings for these guys. And we kept trying to tell them, stop building listings. Because what they were doing is they were literally cannibalizing each other, right? Oh, that makes sense. They, they were all fighting for the same customer. So we merged all the pages. We put a hefty budget against it. And it's, it's, it's called Castile. And it's literally one of the pages I send everybody to. 70% of their new traffic comes from Yelp. They do Google and stuff. They spend about $25,000 a month in advertising and they're spending only seven grand on Yelp, but yet that gives them 70% of their competition. When COVID breaks and eases up, they're going to move that budget up to 15 grand. Nice. One of the key things too, and let me just stay on that for if I can with Castile is we learned a lot about the mistakes, right? Most of your people have businesses. And I think uh, Sherry and I talked about this yesterday for one of the locations is, they had somebody answer the phone, but they weren't answering the response properly. So for example, they send out, Hey, Jeremy, I'd like to get a, Jeremy sends to Dwayne, Dwayne, I'd love to get a quote on a storage unit for this location. Can you give me more advice? And instead of maybe saying, Hey, you know, that's great. We've got some good specials. Can you please call this number? So I know exactly what you're looking for and let's set and, and to help you with that. What we did with Castile, we did that same process. We then had them calling in on a call tracking number we would give them a call tracking number and then we could quantify that they left Yelp, ended on Yelp and went forward. And then to that other point is if they answer the phone and they don't answer the phone correctly, they're going to lose them. They're going to lose them right out of the gate. So it's really important to educate the person answering the phone when it comes in. Cause they always say, Hey, how did you, hey, Jeremy, how'd you find me? And with your yeah. response, the internet, right? Or yeah. newspaper, <laughs> TV or whatever it is, they don't really quantify it. So it's important that we have the tracking components on the Yelp page to help the advertiser quantify it. Castile, Castile is amazing. And by the way, it's only a three-star business. And they, last year, they made over a million dollars off of Yelp. Wow. Uh, the way, were you able to pull up the chat box on the I mean, bottom mm -hmm. corner? Yep. Um, so I think the next one was from Stephanie. Okay. I don't know if you see that one. It starts off with, I received a negative review. Okay. So if you'd like to follow along, everyone else listening, just uh, bring up the chat okay. window. So it's, uh, yeah. So I received a negative review and I was unable to respond without a picture. The reason there, there is no workaround. We use facial recognition. And the reason we do this is to prevent robots or third party people trying to cannibalize or pirate your page. So you have to have facial recognition and it has to be a face. It can't be an emoji. It can't be a brand. Now, we have some that are grandfathered in prior to that change legal came with, but you have to have a picture in order to respond. So I, I go back to the robot days, right? Remember we used to hire the robots to click on the competitor's page to either run through their CPC budget or we had them clicking on our page to make it more valuable. That's a lot of reason the algorithms. Google's algorithm, Yelp's are all the same. In fact, I went on LinkedIn to this point, and I'm gonna segue off this a little bit, but. I went on LinkedIn. I have quite a few followers and I was on LinkedIn and I put a message out to my guys and I said, what if Google showed the filtered reviews tomorrow? Could your agency take the calls? Because every platform, only 72% of all reviews are shown on any platform. I don't care what it is. That's not my stat. You guys can go do some research and find that out. But I literally, my inbox on LinkedIn was going nuts. What do you know? What's going on? Did I miss something? <laughs> you know, they're all like in panic mode. You know, yeah. oh my God, it's another Yelp. What the hell are we going to do? Right. It was, it was crazy. But end of the day, Yelp's completely transparent. So to Stephanie, to your point, put a face up. Nice. That's what they're looking for. And then they'll, the, our, our moderators will literally go and look at the, the face picture you put up and decide whether or not it's you. They're going to look at social media. They're going to search you and they're going to, they're going to validate that you are truly who you say you are. Great question though. So the next one was up uh, from Sandy right uh, below it. Okay.
Yeah, absolutely. So I can literally pull a search in any DMA you want for any type of keyword or type of specialties. So if you had interior designers in the Reno, Nevada, and you want to know how many searches there were for the last 30 days, I can pull that. In fact, um, my largest agency is Viral. And for them, we have a client right now that's here in Phoenix. It's Express Flooring. Uh, they're moving to Dallas-Fort Worth. And we decided based on the DMA where they were going to open the two stores. I actually did some search. I gave them the Yelp DMA. They spend, they spend nice. over 20 grand a month on Yelp. They wow. do very well. But yes, I can get that stuff for you. And right below Yelp. it. Yeah. I see the one from uh, how often should restaurants business be posting to Yelp connect? Yeah. Um, actually I don't have an answer. Yelp connect is a new feature. Um, I literally have zero agencies that are actually using it at this point, but, um, I will find out that data from you. I have a friend of mine that's on that team and I'll find out for you. Nice. Yeah. Cause when I saw that question, I was like, I've actually not heard of this before. Um, yeah. so good to know. Uh, Yelp connect. I'll get that answer. Great question though. Kathy. Uh oh. <laughs> Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, where's my... One day I'm going to learn how to work a mouse. <laughs> Good question. Is there any reason why my client should or should not work directly with Yelp versus an HC? And what happens if the client that doesn't... Ah, that's a long one, isn't it? All right. They're getting cut. I... What happens if I have a client that doesn't believe they're getting customers? Great question. So the advantage of working as a client partner with Yelp is twofold. First and foremost, you're going to have access to things that your client cannot get, period. They have to call a 1-800 number, your agency. They just have to call the agency, and the agency says call 1-800-Dwayne. They just call me direct, right? So you take the guesswork out of it. Secondly, the agency can provide products and results like TRO reports, time range reports, things of that nature, that as a Yelp business, you can't get without it. Uh, video, uh, UTM codes, they can, where if you have, for example, we had a question earlier about they had 10 accounts and they wanted to do, for example, enhanced profiles on all 10, well, they could do UTM codes on 10. Once they add an 11th account, they would not be able to do UTM codes for that. So there's some different barriers in place that we use to push people with Yelp of larger businesses into us. Um, just to give you an idea, Starbucks just signed a $100,000 a month upgrade June 1st with Yelp. I find that interesting though. Like what, like, I, I mean, they're just such a, a large brand. I understand. Like I understand the importance of Yelp, but do they, do they really need to spend even more money with a brand? Like that's that powerful. I, yeah. I, I think I don't care. I don't care how big you are. The second you take money, you take money out of the game and start stepping back and saying, okay, I'm great. I'm just going to ride the greatness. You're no longer going to be great. Somebody will take your position for sure. So I think it's sustaining, but also, you know, they're trying to grow. And one of the reasons they decide to up the budget is because of the amount of our, our restaurant searches and stuff and stuff have changed a little bit, but 3 million searches, think about 3 million searches in the last 30 days in Las Vegas for a restaurant, 3 million. That means 3 million people sitting at home, working from home, whatever, are looking for somebody to deliver their business, deliver food, right? So, and, and Kathy's question is, so how do you quantify that, right? Well, again, you have to have the call tracking, call rail, call wagon. We have to be able to listen to recordings to say, no, no, they came. We opened the door. You just didn't close the loop, right? Yeah. Our job as marketing people is to open the door and get the consumer in front of that business. It's not to sell it. They have to close the loop. So that's what we try to do. And if they don't believe that, then you can, we can use that and say, yeah, this is what we see. With them. We have to give the information. We're never going to sell them. You got clients, blah, blah, blah. We're just going to prove value. And that's really what we have tools to do at this level to do is to prove value for you. Is there a, Lisa, this is a good question, by the way. Is there a way to prevent the public user from altering my content, especially these line top hours seem like? Um, yeah, actually there is. So if you claim your page, what you need to do is there's a customer support number that's there or an email. It's always in the back end for you if you're not going to work directly with Yelp itself. You can actually request them and say, hey, I've got clients updating 
upgrade, updating my specialties, my hours and stuff without my permission, please lock the fields. We can lock the fields. Okay. Great question though. And if we see competitors, oh, by the way, um, if we see competitors or something, or we had, I don't know if you guys are up to speed on the, Trump was in Tucson. And then there was a lady had a Hispanic lady that had a, a, a restaurant down in Oracle and she had a Trump hat on stuff. So they decided they were going to land based her plate just blow it up. Right. People had never been there. People from California, people from New York were going to their page and just writing bad, awful things. Oh, she's a Trump lover, blah, blah, her, her place sucks, et cetera, et cetera. We literally went out and we shut her page down. We removed all those, all those, that, that plethora, that, that dillage that came in there. So if you ever have a situation or client that's getting beat up on Yelp, send it to me. Let me look at it. And if it's a bad thing, I'll help you guys help them. Okay. Well, that's good to know because, I mean, you always see, like, all of these news articles of, of maybe a business owner doing something right. that maybe the masses don't agree with or vice versa, and these people go on and just trash their Yelp. Um, so that's good to know. I actually didn't know that you guys yeah. offer that service. We had that, happen, we had that happen in Scottsdale, too. There was a famous little restaurant. And the issue was um, this lady just – they found out that they were basically taking the server's tips. When they bought food, they were taking that money out of the server's tip jars and stuff. Yeah. And everybody that was a Yelper from here to Timbuktu, it had yeah. 1,500 reviews hit it in, 30, in less than 24 hours. Wow. And not one person stepped foot in that door. Yeah. And that's, so yeah. We, we protect the business. You know, end of the day, what I tell people is your Yelp listing is your business. You as, you, as the, you as the business owner have the right to defend your business. Yeah. But there's proper etiquette and proper ways to do it. Taking the high road, doing the right thing, asking for help. Always do that. Um, got another one here. It's good. For the reviews that don't display on the profile, are there any plans for Yelp to change the title of the section from other reviews that are not currently recommended to something that doesn't sound like they're bad reviews? <laughs> no. Actually, that's better. It used to be, um, instead of uh, non-recommended, it was, uh, oh my God, I just had a, I forgot it. Um, I, I don't, I've not heard anything of that nature. Non-recommended reviews, I know it has a little bit of a negative connotation to it. But end of the days, most people that use Yelp a lot, and they see like two or three reviews up, and it's a four-star business, and they see the four or five in the non-recommended, they're going to go down and check anyway. The difference is it just doesn't add to the star value. And by the way, they're not gone forever. So let me give you a perfect example. I'm going to use me. Because like I said, before I started Yelp, I did not know understand Yelp. I did not use it. I didn't really get my arms around it. Uh, I was in North Carolina, and I wrote a three-star review. We sent our food back twice. The waitress was running her legs off trying to handle things. She was doing a great job. I waited tables. I think three things everybody should do. Go to a fourth world, wait tables, and work on a farm. Everything else is easy, okay? Uh, so anyway, I wrote a three-star review. It went up for a couple of days, and then it came down. Again, the system didn't recognize me. Jeremy, it would be no different than you come into my house and trying to log into your checking account. Yeah. You know your username and password. But this IP address doesn't register to you. Yeah, it makes sense. So Yelp's this, think of Yelp like that. If it doesn't recognize or understand or trust that user, it won't post that review. So my review came up and then it went down. I started on Yelp April 1st, 2012. Second week of May, I got a nasty letter from our compliance team saying, hey, you're a Yelp sales employee. You're not allowed to write reviews. One more review written could mean termination for you. And then I responded, hey, I wrote that before I came to work here. Please don't hold this against me. So it popped back up. So understand when I told you to respond to all the reviews in the beginning, I don't care if they're non-recommended. Oh, it's filtered. They used to say filtered. Filtered was the word before non-recommended. If it's in the non-recommendation, those aren't gone forever. If that person starts to yell, yell it comes back. And it can go the other way. Uh, I'm going to use me again. I have a son that passed away May 8, 2014. And Blair was an avid, avid Yelper. He was always checking in, always using it. He, he doesn't show up anywhere anymore. He's in wow. everything he did is non-recommended. So that filter works both ways. Wow. So if you have somebody who's using Yelp a lot and stop using it, their reviews can fall off. So there's a lot of little idiosyncrasies that I've learned with tenure over this and in applying with my back tenure too that has helped me to really understand some of the frustrations. And in, in, in the end of the day, you ask your client, do you want, do, are you looking for five more reviews or are you looking for 50 more customers? Yeah. Customers will take care of the reviews. 
anyway, that's my two cents. That's my spiel. <laughs> no, it's good. No, hey, that that works because I I remember like you know just traveling uh, with my fiance and I like the first thing she does is where do you want to eat tonight? And she hops on Yelp and then she looks at like the bad, the most recent bad reviews. And then she looks at the most recent good reviews. And then we look at the menu and mm-hmm. we're, and then we see the responses, you know, and we're like, right. hey, it seemed like right. a great place. Right. You know? But when you think about it, like I asked you earlier, when's the last time you went to Yelp and didn't engage a business? Unless you were looking at it from a marketing perspective. As yeah. a consumer, when we go to Yelp, we're, we're ready to go, right? Yeah. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to do. I've already made a decision. You know, we're going like, so, uh, for me, like I used to watch when we travel to Hong Kong or anywhere in the world or Rome or wherever we go, I used to watch Andrew Zimmer all the time. Cause he would eat the funny foods around the world. There I'm a go. foodie. My wife's an Oklahoma steak and potato girl. So she's looking for subway. I'm looking for the guy that's got the shack with this little crab that comes out that changes your life. Right. So <laughs> I bookmark this stuff on Yelp before we go and then we do it. Yeah. Nice. Um, another question came up. This is a good one too. Can businesses set minimum ad spend? I missed a little of the talk beginning. I'm not sure. But yes. So yeah, absolutely. They can set the ad spend. And, and what we do with uh, Second and Watkins with Kathy and Sherry is we talk about the DMA. We talk about the available search. We look at a competitive landscape. And we just don't throw a number out there. We try to figure out what's going to make you relevant. Um, but yes, they can. Some Pete wants to know in that 3 million searches in Vegas, really, that was in 30 days. And it used to be over. It used to be over four million before COVID. Wow! Well, say it one more time. Sorry, I was I was typing and I forgot to hit mute. Yeah. Say it one more time. So yeah, Pete asked. Tell us one more time about the three million searches in Vegas recently. That's in thirty days. Wow. <laughs> That's a thirty-day number. I always, when I work with Sherry and Kathy, I always give them thirty-day numbers. Unbelievable! It just I was. It was just brought to my attention that. Someone was uh, making fun of my billboard for Love Store up here. They're a client of mine. <laughs> so I, I just had an extra one that was made. But yeah, thank you for outing me, Kathy. Where's, my, where's mine, Jeremy? <laughs> I'm sorry. But yes, all of you should go to Love Store for your needs. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So right now I'm nervous, okay? <laughs> Jeremy, I did it privately. I didn't out you for everybody. Uh, it had to be done because I'm sure someone saw it and was like, what the hell has he got a love store billboard up there? I am a billboard salesman. <laughs> so where's your sample drawer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think, do we have any other um, questions? Or I think we made the love store jingle. I did the love store jingle, by the way. Nice. It's on TV now. <laughs> nice. nice. It's a fantastic client and the owner's a wonderful man. Yeah, he's very nice. He's very easy to work with. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey guys, um, believe it or not, this is technically my last um, hosting luncheon, if you will, as president. Um, this is, my term is actually like officially done uh, after this and is Marissa Skinner. So virtual high fives or a uh, round of applause. <laughs> She is the incoming what president. Is that a parade wave? What is that? <laughs> yeah, she's- the princess one. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, congratulations. Thank you to everyone this past year. I wish we could end in person because we usually try to bring everyone together um, and take a bunch of photos. But you know what? We'll have that ceremony, if you will, uh, when we can all fit together. I did receive awesome news that Flemings is now um, able to host luncheons um, at a social distance um setting so i'm gonna go check that out before we agree to anything <laughs> or sign a contract for food um so i will uh we'll definitely keep you posted um i think we, we do have to have another board meeting to real uh, to kind of see maybe we do one like this maybe next month because it's pretty easy um but t- we're typically dark in july and then pick back up in august so uh keep your you know eyes peeled out for the email we'll also send out the deck for, from Dwayne. um we'll send out all his contact information as well as this taping um, so you guys, in case anyone needs to, to go back and see it, um, you know, they definitely will have the resource, but thank you to the board and Marissa and Shahab for saving my butt 50 times this, uh, this past presidency. <laughs> You're a good um, president. I couldn't do it uh, without you guys. So thank you very much. And we, I think we did a really good job this past year. So but that's all I got. <laughs> Marissa, anything? I'm excited guys. I mean, 
obviously things have changed, but we're still going and I'm excited to see what my presidency brings. <laughs> Let's see how things go. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome guys. Well, again, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Keep your eyes peeled for the email. Um, we'll get everything in order for you. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to sit down in August, whatever that capacity looks like. But, uh, you know, that's our main goal. So I definitely appreciate it. Everyone stay safe, wash your damn hands. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Bye. Bye-bye.